the two archers were silently moving forward in the bushes for their target to arrive. They were hiding beside the path on which Buddha was supposed to arrive in a short while. These two archers were not alone. There were four more archers in ready to shoot position and eight in the next ring and another 16 in the last ring. All of the archers were also armed with swords and daggers. They were some of the best archers in the kingdom of Magadh and they had received just one order to assassinate Buddha once he arrives on the road. The assassins were ordered to kill Buddha by the king of Magadh Empire himself. The king had already put his father Bimbisar in the prison and had captured the throne. The only unfinished work for him was to assassinate Buddha and then the conspiracy initiated by Devadatta would have been completed. The first archer hiding in the bushes heard the footsteps on the road. He took his aim and stretched his bow. The next thing he saw was Buddha arriving on the road, walking slowly. Now he could finally see him very clearly. He remembered the order of the king and aimed his arrow. Suddenly he felt that his body was becoming stiff and he could not move. He got very terrified. He felt that Buddha was looking into his eyes. Buddha told the archer lovingly to come to him and not to be afraid of him. The archer put his bow and arrow down on the ground and approached Buddha. He fell on the feet of Buddha and started begging for forgiveness. The other archers have not seen what happened to him. When they tried to kill Buddha, the same thing happened to them and they could not move their body till they had the intention to kill him. Terrified, all of them ran towards Buddha and begged for forgiveness. They were pardoned by the great teacher and all of them took the refuge in Dhamma. The king was furious with the failure of his archers to execute his order. Devadatta entered the chambers of the king. He was the cousin and brother-in-law of Buddha. He joined the Sangha long time back when Buddha had visited Kapilvastu, the capital city of Sakyan kingdom, immediately after his enlightenment. Now it was several years since he had joined Sangha and he felt that now Buddha had grown old and the leadership of Sangha should be handed over to him. He went to Buddha with this proposal, but Buddha refused. Buddha refused another of his proposal to make changes in the rules for the monks. In anger, he broke the Sangha and established his school. With his 500 followers, Devadatta went to the crown prince Ajatsatru of Magadh and won his confidence. The prince became his devout follower. He provoked the prince to kill King Bimbisar and capture the throne. He asked the prince that after he becomes the king, in return for his help, he should get Buddha killed. The prince was convinced that this was the perfect plan, but instead of killing his father, he imprisoned him and captured the throne of Magadh. Now the new king needed to return the favor, but the assassins sent by him had all failed. Devadatta decided that he will himself kill Buddha now. He reached the Gridhikut hill and waited for Buddha standing on a peak. Buddha was staying on the Gridhikut hill along with his followers. Once Buddha came down on the road, he hurled a large rock down towards Buddha. But the rock broke down into two parts after it collided with another rock and it was not able to crush Buddha. However, the splinters of the rock hit the foot of Buddha and he got injured. Jivak, the royal physician of Rajgri, treated Buddha and in few days, Buddha was fit again to walk. Devdatta was enraged by his failure. He came to the king with another plan to kill Buddha. The king had a very aggressive and large elephant named Nalagri. He was very hard to control and all the Mahavats were scared of him as he had killed several men before. As per the plot, Devadatta went to the royal Mahavat and bribed him to get the elephant intoxicated with liquor. Once Buddha was seen walking on the road of Rajgri, along with his followers, the intoxicated elephant was set loose. The ferocious elephant came charging towards him, destroying everything on the path. When his prime disciple Ananda saw the elephant Nalagri coming charging towards Buddha, he moved in front of Buddha to protect him from the elephant. Buddha told Ananda that nothing could harm him and asked him to step away. Buddha moved slowly towards the elephant and once the charging elephant came in front of him, he put his hand over his trunk and head. Nalagiri immediately became quiet with the loving kindness of Buddha. He simply sat on the feet of Buddha. By that time, King Ajatsatru had realized that he had committed mistakes. He ordered his father to be released immediately. But when the guards went to the prison to release Bimbisar, they found that he was already dead. It was too late for the release. The king repented and went to Buddha to seek forgiveness for his attempts to assassinate him. Ajatsatru ordered Devdatta to leave his kingdom. Devdatta left Rajgri along with some of his followers. He had grown very sick and was spitting blood from his mouth. He realized that whatever he had done to Buddha was the greatest of the sins and wanted to seek forgiveness from Buddha. Realizing that his end is near, he desired to meet Buddha. Buddha told his followers that Devdatta would not be able to see him again in this life. Devdatta came to know that at that time, Buddha was staying at the Jetavana monastery in Sravasti for his rainy retreat. 
he started his travel towards Travasti. But immediately before reaching the Jetavana Vihar in Stravasti, he sank into the earth. Before his death, he took refuge in Buddha. The marshy land near the present-day Sri Lanka monastery is supposed to be the place where Devdatta sank into the earth.